Welcome to Irish Football Weekly, where we talk Notre Dame football here on The Grilling Truth. My name is Josh Benjamin, host of The Real Deal. Uh, I'm just one of the hosts. Uh, the other, the better half of this host uh, duo is Tony Hunter, who's a former tight end for the Irish from 79 to 82. He's also a first-round draft pick by the Buffalo, Buffalo Bills in the 83 draft. Uh, Tony, what's going on, my man? Oh, not too much, Josh. How are you doing today? Happy Thanksgiving to you, and happy Thanksgiving to all of our Notre Dame faithful. Absolutely. You, you took the words right out of my mouth. Happy Turkey Day to everyone out there, uh, all listeners, and uh, to yourself and your family as well, uh, listeners and my co-host, Tony. So um, you can catch us on uh, each week, of course, on our website, thegruelingtruth.net. Also, Stitcher, Spreaker, iTunes, Google Music, and iHeartRadio as well. So you can catch us on any of those anytime you like. Now, <clears throat> we've got to talk about the Irish, obviously. And what happened last week, which wasn't what we wanted, uh, Tony. And uh, they ended up losing, coming back. Uh, they were uh, up 10 points at one point, and uh, they ended up losing. So let's talk about it. Yeah, you know what? We came out and looked like, I mean, it's, it's happened before this year. It's happened a, a few times where we come out in the first half, we dominate both offensively and defensively. We, we go in at high halftime with the lead, and then something happens in that second half where we just can't wake up, and uh, we find a way to lose the football game. It's happened way too many times this year. Yeah, and uh, it's very disheartening, obviously, how the season's going and, and how uh, that is just snowballing upon things that happen, whether it's a play or a game or – even the, the latest controversy, if you haven't heard, listeners, the uh, NCAA is asking uh, Notre Dame to vacate the wins from the 2012 and the 2013 season, which the 2012 season is when they went 12-1 and one, um, going and lost in the championship game to Alabama. But uh, so a lot of things, about, a lot of negative, unfortunately, going on at Notre Dame at this point. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I'll tell you what, uh, that NCAA announcement, was just like, I mean, um, it blindsided us. It blindsided Notre Dame. It blindsided me. Um, something that Notre Dame has stood for, for as long as I've been affiliated with Notre Dame, I've wanted to go to Notre Dame. Uh, Notre Dame has always been the type of university where their uh, player athletes, uh, their their student athletes are, are expected to, to make – the grade academically, and they're expected to perform on the field athletically. And uh, from my experience at Notre Dame, this is what I saw. And uh, it seems like all of that is under assault right now with um, the NCAA threatening to uh, vacate all all victories from the uh, 2012-2013 season. And uh, But I will say this. Notre Dame is appealing, is appealing its case, and I think Notre Dame has an excellent chance of uh, of winning in this appeal. Yeah, and I actually was going to mention the appeal, which uh, is going to happen very, very soon, um, and we'll see what happens. Hopefully, as far as Notre Damers come, uh, we we want that obviously that appeal. I, I just don't get the the reasons why for vacating wins, taking wins away from people who aren't involved, you know, if it's, if it's players, take away their scholarship. Make it, you know, make it hurt, obviously, in an individual way, in my opinion, at least. I, I should speak for myself. But, uh, you know, do something uh, to where there's ramifications, you know, suspension of games or suspended for the year or whatever. Uh, right, right, Josh. There was no institutional involvement in this situation. Sounds like there was a, an assistant trainer or, or, or a trainer – um, and a few players, uh, I guess there was uh, some papers that were written for the players by this assistant trainer, and uh, the coach didn't know anything about it. The university didn't know anybody, anything about it. But uh, the NCAA is holding uh, the university accountable for something that was done by a few individuals. And um, I was reading something that uh, 
New York President Reverend John Jenkins was saying in reference to this whole situation, and he's saying that the, the NCAA has never before vacated the records of an institution that had no involvement in the underlying academic misconduct uh, of uh, some individuals in the program. Uh, so this is the first, and on top of that, the NCAA has since voted to change the rule that, that has brought the, the Notre Dame case within the NCAA jurisdiction. So this is something we're being penalized for something that is already that is already in front of the NCAA, and, and they're trying to remove it right now. So I think Notre Dame has a really good chance in appeal uh, to win this thing and, and to be vindicated. It's disheartening as a player if I'm a player on that team and they take away wins, stats, whatever, and obviously coaching as, as well with uh, <clears throat> being an individual role for whoever, uh, whatever party did this uh, ridiculous act. Um, but uh, it's just a bad situation, like we said, and, and it's making the program look even worse after this 4-7 and seven season. Could possibly be 4-8, and eight, which... Um, is a very good possibility, unfortunately, if you look at who they're playing, which uh, is USC this week um, out there in Los Angeles at the Memorial Coliseum. Uh, yeah. Oh, they play good football, too. Uh, USC is playing top five football in the country right now. Uh, so when you, didn't think anything, when you didn't think things could get any worse, they just did with the uh, NCAA announcement, and, and now – we're going in to play, I think, our biggest rival, USC. That was uh, that was the game that I enjoyed playing in the most while I was at Notre Dame was a USC game. But uh, I think we're having such a tough time this year, and with them playing as well as they, they've been playing the last few weeks, uh, I just hope we can go in here and uh, represent ourselves, represent the, the Fighting Irish. Yeah, and uh, speaking of tough uh, game last week, just kind of touching on that for a few minutes. Um, some stats offensively, which seem to be pretty good. Obviously, they, they scored you know over 30 points, and uh, Josh Adams and Deshaun Kaiser both had over 80 yards rushing, and Josh Adams ever had over 100. And then uh, uh, Kaiser had connected with eight different receivers, which is you know what we wanted, what we talked about all season, Tony. And you know it just seems to me. Uh, Kaiser was 16 for 33, so it wasn't a great, efficient day on in terms of passing attempts and completions. But this seems to me, you know, it's 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 very inconsistent whether it's offense or defense or a certain position group. It just seems like it just one thing every week is what hurts them. Yeah, you know what? Um, this whole thing with the NCAA, I think it's it's been uh, it's been around for a while, and 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 I wonder. If the players knew about it beforehand, because it seems like they've been playing under some pressure this year, they didn't. They don't seem to be playing. They don't seem to be out there having fun and playing football. And I wonder if they've known about this this situation with the NCAA, and that's been a part of that. So I'm not sure, but. Uh, It's um, it's it's been an interesting season to say the least. Very, very disappointing. Yeah, and uh, yeah, you you might be right. You might be right with the uh, knowing, having knowledge about the uh, incident or incidents that um, factor into those vacating the wins. And yeah, I wonder if they knew about it. I wonder if, and, and they probably have. They probably have known about it. To be honest with you, I would I would think so. I'm not going to speculate and say they for sure, but I would say that 18 to 22-year-olds know what their teammates are doing for the most part. And, or well, just as far as knowing that, that, that uh, they're under investigation from, from the NCAA and, and knowing that there's a possibility uh, I just, I, yeah, of uh, the penalties that could possibly come with that. Uh, so that's it. That's all. Yeah. Let's uh, 
I I don't know about you, but I'm kind of dumb talking about the Virginia Tech game just because it it at this point it, we're four and seven. Um, we right. talk about the same the same thing over and over. You know, Notre Dame had a big lead at the beginning. I mean, they scored um, a couple times in the first, uh, here and there, a couple in the second, and so they're up 24, 14 at halftime, a nice cushion lead, and can't hold it back at, in the fourth quarter. They give up 13 points. At the end, they lose it. So I, I'm kind of <laughs> – I don't know about you, Tony, but I'm done talking about this Virginia Tech game, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, I am too. I am too. It's, uh, it, was, it was really frustrating. And like I said, I, I think it's just a repeat of what's been happening this season. When we come out and we play an excellent, excellent game in the, in the first half, both offensively and defensively, and then we come out in the second half and we never wake up or we never seem to get going again in that second half and we find a way to lose the football game. So that's what's been happening and that's what happened then. But um, I tell you what, we're going to have our hands full with the USC, and uh, they won't be thinking about any problems that Notre Dame may or may not have. They're going to come out there to beat Notre Dame, which is, uh, I tell you what, they they, uh, seem to really enjoy it when it does happen, when they do beat Notre Dame. So uh, Notre Dame needs to get ready to play. Absolutely. Something that we have, I don't think we've talked about a whole bunch this year, uh, Tony, is the fact that um, sometimes in these games where the other team comes back to score and takes the lead in the second half, talk about those halftime adjustments that coaches make. Um, maybe, maybe it's a little bit of the coaching. I mean, it, it kind of has to be, doesn't it, as far as mindset, as far as X's and O's, and obviously player personnel. Would, would you agree? Yeah, yeah, I would say that. I would say that there's uh, those halftime adjustments are – are definitely uh, a crucial part of it. Um, and I've heard that they're interested in um, interviewing people for the – or Kelly's interested in interviewing some people outside of the Notre Dame system for that defensive coordinator position, which I was kind of shocked because I thought the defense looked was looking a little bit better than we had been earlier in the season. But uh, uh, from my understanding, it's uh, Kelly's intent to go outside of the current staff and look for another defensive coordinator if he's around uh, as head coach next year, which is something that uh, I'm not so sure about. But uh, under Kelly, I'll tell you what, uh, he's been the winningest coach at Notre Dame since he holds. And he's, I, 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 tell you, I congratulate him because I think he's brought a lot of pride back into our program. And uh, I've enjoyed, I've enjoyed watching us come back and play a much better football than we had been playing in previous years. And that's a direct result of hiring Brian Kelly. But uh, right now, I tell you what, there's a lot on the table, and there's a lot of damage that has been done, and uh, it'll be interesting to see what Notre Dame decides to do from this point forward. Um, not sure if uh, Brian Kelly will be let go, uh, but uh, I tell you what, it's a very interesting time in the history of a great, great program. Yeah, <laughs> all of that I agree totally with and um you know the usc the usc team we're going to talk about right now they are good and uh right now actually notre dame leads the all-time series uh 46 36 and 5 um while out in la at least the trojans uh hold the advantage when they're playing at home 22 19 and 4 so um so obviously some things against us there obviously this team's a great team that we're playing against, a team that's up and coming, a team that uh, is dominant. I mean, uh, they beat Washington a couple weeks ago, looked really, really good. And uh, I just think, you know, we got to have a basically mistake-free game to become successful in this, in this last game. Yeah, I, you know what? I don't even think we would uh, – the guys really – we want to play in a bowl game this year. Maybe, maybe if we surprise the world and beat 
USC this coming week, we might be interested in playing in a bowl game. But it's been a, a long, tough season this year. And I, the guys may just want to get this one up in this last game and uh, regroup for next year. Um, but I tell you what, USC, like you were saying, they're playing top five football. Uh, they're, in contention, they're in contention right now for a big bowl game uh, despite three losses on the season already. So uh, I'm sure they're, they're going to be looking to put up some big numbers and win in a convincing manner. And Notre Dame needs to go ready to play football and, and uh, definitely uh, avoid being embarrassed after on the coast against USC. Well, that's actually what I was going to talk about just briefly is the, the pride factor in this last game. <clears throat> As a senior on this team, if I'm a senior, I'm, I'm definitely making sure that things don't go out the way that this year went, if that makes sense. Oh, you know what? When I went into Notre Dame as a freshman, Josh, I mean, we had played, we had gone through, I think, half the season. And I saw with the whole, um, I mean, we, we had practices and everything, uh, and going to uh, games against different teams, Michigan. Uh, I think we played Michigan State, we played Purdue. But then when that USC week came up, I mean, everything picked up. Practices picked up. Practices were more physical. Um, the upperclassmen, the fifth-year fifth year seniors, uh, the upperclassmen that were in the program, they took it a lot more serious. Uh, things just changed when that USC and I remember that to this day, how, how the whole locker room atmosphere changed. The practice field, the level of intensity, everything changed that USC weekend. I can remember Dave Wehmer, Dave Wehmer who was a captain and defensive back for us at that time. I can remember him saying that first day, that Monday, we went out for practice against uh, for the USC week. He went in. It's USC week. It's SC week. That was the chant. It's SC week. And I mean, I tell you what, you could see the intensity pick up like you wouldn't believe because it was a USC week. So it's a great time. It's a it's a beautiful thing to experience. <laughs> oh, I'm getting uh, tinglys on my arm. I'm just thinking about how practices <laughs> how, how <laughs> are. Man, I tell you. What, I'm getting pumped up just hearing about that. And uh, oh yeah, oh yeah, it was uh, kind of shocked me too because, like I said, we had been through four or five games already, so you know I knew what it was supposed to be like. But when that UFC week came, I mean everything picked up, and I mean guys were going at it in practice, and it was just just like a game during the practice. So it's uh it's a different ball game come uh, come UFC week, and I, and I hope. The Notre Dame guys realize that and get out there and, and represent like they should be. Yeah, I totally agree. And uh, that um, takes us to our next segment, uh, which we'll talk about that prediction time a little bit later. But the three toughest picks, Tony, I'm on your uh, coattail here. I'm one game behind. Um, you're 16 and 11. I'm 15 and 12. I'm just happy to be over 500, but uh, I'm definitely <laughs> right there with you. So we both went one and two last week, um, and uh, so that we were kind of left where we were at, you know, the end of last or at the beginning of last week. So got some really tough games this week, and some probably obvious ones that we're gonna choose from. So here we go. Number five, Washington, um, at uh, twenty-three, Washington State. So in-state rivalry, right there. Um, so Washington's on the road playing at Washington State. Who you got, Tony? I think I'm going to take Washington. They need this win. They need it bad. Uh, so I'm going to go with you, Dub Washington. All right, all right. I'm going to take Washington. Well, yeah, uh, it's very important that they win this game to even give uh, consideration for the college football playoff. So I'm going with them. Exactly. Uh, next game, obvious game that's probably going through everyone's minds uh, that lives in Michigan or Ohio or Indiana. Or oh man, that's so, that's uh, going to be a tough one. Oh, it's uh, number three Michigan at uh, number two Ohio State down in Columbus at the Horseshoe. Uh, wow. What do you think? <laughs> you know what? I'm a Buckeye now. I'm born and raised right here in the state of Ohio. 
But the job that Jim Harbaugh has done with that Michigan program, you can't deny it. I think there's even talk that some NFL teams are interested in, in, in bringing them back to the NFL. And the Los Angeles Rams is one of those teams that, that may be interested in bringing him back to California. You know, he was in San Francisco. So Jim Harbaugh, keeping in mind, it's Jim Harbaugh. They're playing against a very talented Buckeye team. Um, I'm going to go with Jim Harbaugh in Michigan. I'm going to go against everything <laughs> that I've loved in the past as far as Ohio State football. And I, and I think they have a great team this year, but I'm not going to bet against Jim Harbaugh. I'm going to, I'm going to say Michigan will take this game. Okay, well, um, that's that's surprising. I thought you were going to take Ohio State. Um, I normally would. I normally would, but I can't bet against Jim Harbaugh. I hear you. Just I take, hear you. Yeah. Two, two great coaches, two Hall of Fame coaches, um, great programs, obviously. Um, I, I truly think it's going to come down to quarterback play uh, in this game, and, and we'll see how it goes. But I, I'm going with Ohio State in this game. Uh, my All right. Again, fan. Actually, uh, short story here. My father-in-law, I think his brother, is uh, one of the assistant athletic directors at Michigan. So I'm going against my fam on this one. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> they won't be too happy when they hear this show and understand. <laughs> so I probably will tell them, yeah, I didn't do a show this week because, uh, well, it's Michigan week. So. Anyway. Uh, oh, yeah. You know what? This is going to be one of the most competitive Michigan-Ohio State games. We've seen in a long time because um, of the ranking. Um, both teams are just playing really good football. So I'll be right there sitting inside watching this one. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm there with you. I'm definitely going to be doing that. So um, Our last game here, uh, man, it's SEC. It's one of the oldest rivalries um, in college football. It's number 13, Auburn. At number one, Alabama. Um, wow. At Alabama. at Alabama. Okay, that's all you had to say. At Alabama. I'm going to go with Alabama. But it'll be interesting. Yeah, I can't, I, I can't outsmart myself this time. It, it's got to be Alabama. They've they got to win this game. And, and if they don't, that, then that puts a huge spin on those guys that are doing the college football playoff rankings. And who's right. Not. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. But anyway. All right, so – Got the three picks in uh, each, and we'll see how that turns out. Upset of the week, just briefly here in this segment. Um, last week I picked UCLA to beat USC, and that didn't happen, obviously. But this week is very possible. Uh, it's a Big Ten matchup. Number 16, Nebraska at Iowa. Iowa um, is scary. Um, they, didn't they just beat Michigan a couple weeks ago? So they, uh, it, it's going to be interesting. I, I think this is an upset that we can definitely call and say that it will happen. So you think you think uh, Iowa is going to beat Nebraska? Yeah, I think so. They're playing at home, and uh, they just beat they, you know they just beat Michigan a couple weeks ago, and I just feel that they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna shock the world again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's interesting. That's interesting. Um, and so, what is uh, Nebraska rated so far? They're, are they rated? They're number sixteen. They're number sixteen, and Iowa are they in the top twenty. No, they're not rated at all. They're unrated. Yeah. And so you're going with Iowa on that one. I'm going to go with Nebraska. Okay, okay. I'm going to go with Nebraska. That's probably the safe pick because, you know, whoever I choose will probably lose. So. <laughs> no, I've had, I've had a tough last couple of weeks. But uh, it's coming down to the wire here, Josh. It's coming down it to is. the wire. It is. All right. Um, one of our uh, favorite times of our show is – Irish prediction time. Um, I'm not sure, to be honest with you, how excited I am to give this prediction. But um, yeah, let's let's give our predictions, Tony. Let's do it. It's going to be a tough one. Uh, we are going to have to go ready to play football, and it's a matter it's a matter of pride this week. It's a matter of Notre Dame pride this week. Going out to USC, knowing that we have every bit as much talent on our sideline as they do on theirs. Now it's just a matter of going out here, 
being physical and taking the fight to them. I'm going to say no names going to do that. And no names, I'm going to say no names going to win it. I'm going to say Kaiser's going to have a good game. He's going to put up some good numbers. 35-28, Notre Dame. Ooh, okay. 35-28. And I'm saying that because they're going to, they can't contain Kaiser. If Kaiser comes to play, they cannot win this football game. So I'm going to say 30, 35-28. Notre Dame, upset, USC. All right, I like your style there. I like your style. Let's, uh, let's go with, obviously, I think uh, the Irish have to play mistake-free. Obviously, like you talked about, playing with pride. Um, they gotta, they got to win special teams. they got to have a couple big plays there, and obviously a turnover uh, margin with that. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm with you. I, I think it's going to be high scoring. It seems like almost every game is high scoring when they're in this year. But I, I know. Uh, I'll pick them. I'm gonna go with them. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna say a little bit higher. Though. I'm gonna say it's gonna be 42-38. Uh, uh, you just might. You, you might be right. Okay. Yeah. You just might be right because if, if Kaiser can come out and spread that ball, spread that football around to all the different talent that he has, uh, the way he did in the previous game, I think he'll be just fine. I think he'll be tough to beat. And Here's another motivation for the De- Deshaun Kaiser. It may be the last game of of his Notre Dame career, and it could catapult him into being the number one overall pick in the National Football League draft because I think Cleveland is really interested in taking him number one overall. So you talk about motivation, and he probably won't say this, but there is definitely – motivation for him to come out and have a big game on national television against USC and possibly become the first player taken in the National Football League draft. So there it is. Without a doubt, I totally agree. Um, That's a great point. Uh, It could be potentially his last game. And uh, he obviously he wants to go out with a positive note, whether it's winning um, or, you know, individual play. I'm not sure he's that type of person to think about individual play, but uh, he's got to play well to obviously give the, the Irish a chance to, chance to win. So, I'm um, sure, I'm sure he does think about that. So, yeah, very Oh, good. yeah, he's thinking about his family. I'm sure he thinks about his family and the well-being of his family. Uh, if he can become the first pick in the draft, boy, that would do wonders for most families. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I couldn't agree more with that. Definitely. Okay, well. Uh, our fun fact for the finish, which we have to think about a couple things, um, and this is one of them, okay? So uh, listeners, fans, everyone out there listening, take, take a listen to this fun fact. Notre Dame's seven losses this year have come by a total of 32 points. So that is less than five points per loss. So wow. they're, in games. they're in games, and no other team in uh, FBS – has more than five losses by eight points or less, and so <clears throat> that puts that puts a toll on on a team that keeps getting right there, right there, right there, and losing. And that right, uh, right, a, and uh, and uh, it'll be interesting to know how many times we were actually winning those games that we lost at halftime. We were winning a lot of those games at halftime. Yeah, that's a great point. That's a great point. Um, so. And just going back to that fact that we're real, real young, um, uh, but that you know sometimes that's no excuse at this point in the season. So, uh, but anyway, the seven losses by a combined total of 32 points makes it pretty interesting on how the season could have been uh, the what if scenario, I guess you should say. But uh, but there's that. So um, all right, all right. Well, uh, listeners, that's a wrap for our show for this week on Irish Football Weekly. Don't forget to check out our website, thegruelingtruth.net, which uh, will have multiple shows to your liking. For example, my show, The Real Deal, and uh, Tony's show with the L.A. Rams. And uh, you can listen to those on multiple media outlets besides our website, such as uh, Stitcher, Spreaker, Google Music, iTunes, iHeartRadio. You, know you know the routine. So, uh, as well, um, Tony and I are on social media, such as Facebook, so you can search our names and uh, become friends with us. And don't stalk us because we're not all about that. But uh, – 
Um, you can talk yeah. on there about Notre Dame football and uh, anything else to that matter when it comes to sports related. And then the only thing, yeah, the only thing I'd like to say, Josh, is Notre Dame faithful. It's tough times right about now, but let's keep our heads up. We'll get through it. We always have. Go Irish. Absolutely, absolutely. So yeah, we'll we'll stick together. We'll stay together, and we'll we'll back the Irish and and uh, continue to go forward. But <clears throat> just kind of finish up my little spiel. I'm also on Twitter. You can follow me at Coach JB4 uh, as well. And um, that's a wrap, folks. Thanks for listening. Uh, for my co-host Tony Hunter, this is Josh Benjamin signing off for Irish Football Weekly. Go Irish! Peace. Go Irish.